Welcome back to some more Umineko when they cry. So, where we last left off. So, Balor was, uh, was curious about Beatrice. And then all the, the entire fa family gathering was up in the, in the dining room, aka this family conference. There was some uh, some amusing stuff going on there, especially like family hierarchy, and then Jessica being a rebel and just you know, shit talking. Kinzo, which is uh, her grandfather, and Natsuki can't can't even put up with her shit. And then in the meanwhile, uh, Kinzo is just like holed up in his study, refusing to get out. And Kraus, well. Pretty sure Kraus has a pretty punchable face. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's go he's gonna be a complete sack of shit later on. Oh man! At least we know that there are two personalities when it comes to uh, Kinzo. One that he's just a crazy lunatic, and the other is just he's all composed. So uh, yeah. Anyway, let's continue reading. Kinzo looked up to the sky outside the window. He spread his arms as if appealing to someone up in the skies. Moshi! Watashi ni sono kiseki o teni suru shikaku ga atta nara! Oh! Beatrice! Beatrice! お前の愛苦しい笑顔をもう一度だけ見せてくれ。どれほどの月日を平和ともお前の面影が消えることはない。ただお前の微笑が見たい。それだけだ。お前から授かったものをすべて返そう。あの日からの栄光を全てお前に返そう。富も名誉も黄金もいらぬ。You don't say. お前に授かったすべてを返そう。私はただお前の美少が見たいだけなのだ。His nonsensical yells became a scream and then a wail. Kinzo slumped to the floor, tearing at it with both hands. Genji had no choice but to wordlessly watch over his master's limit lamentations. Oh man. Ya Sokum Tosu Samo Guaima Sungure Ranai Tono Kotoda. Gee, I wonder why. Set Kak Koste, Ichinem Burino Kaimonia Tsmate Kreta Sokum to Chushako Tomoni de Kinai Koto. Does this mean we can eat now? Goda, lunch will hold me to crew. Kasko Marimasta. So there are hundreds no chushoko, Hajime Sasete Itadakimasu. About time. Nanjo Sense, so Nani Oto Saman Oguai Vavaruino. I'm pretty sure it's more than bad. Yeah, yeah. Once again, you could have just glimpsed just for one second. Fucking Rudolph's sister is like, are you kidding me with this bullshit? Kochtra, Aki no Kso Isogashi, Jikini schedule to go stay, 
ご機嫌伺いに来てるんだそれをよ And now he's <笑>よかったじゃないかルドルフご機嫌は伺えたんだそれとも不機嫌な親父殿を私に代わりお前が説得して連れてきてくれるのかねまっさかな He's like, you kidding me? Rudolph shrugged. Apparently, though Rudolph was willing to be ignic, indignant, indignant at how self centered his father was, he wasn't particularly disappointed to be spared a face to face meeting. Indignant. <laughs> face to face meeting. You shook Madeniwa, Sonoki Gen Naurisona, no? Cross Nisa. そんなことは知らんよ。親父殿に直接聞いてみるといい。な、あ、he he's too busy in his own、uh, pro with his own major problems。もっとも声をかけない方が機嫌の治りは早いと思うがね。源氏さんだけだよ。じいさまの機嫌を直せるのは情けないぜ自分の親の機嫌を使用人に直させるんだからよジェシカ余計なことは言わなくていい She planned for her complaint to be heard only by her cousin but it had reached even Krause's ears <laughs> Fucking Krause was like, yeah, I heard that. Scolded, Jessica scowled and turned away, sulking. So yeah, at least Badler is like, surely you can't, you can't be that bit of a disaster, right? おじいさまは特に強い気力をお持ちだからねでも体が必ずしもそれに伴えるとは限らないよ去年からずっと余命3ヶ月って言われ続けてる最初の診断が正しいならおじいさまは気力だけで流られてるってことになる気遣ってあげないといけないよ。Lunch started with the family head seat still empty. The man who should be sitting there had already grown old. And the brilliant glory which had rebuilt the Ushiro Mia family in the span of a single lifetime was being forgotten. Even though they were beginning the meal with that seat still empty, no one felt it was that odd anymore. Well, then, an interesting little sequence right there. Saturday, October 4th, 1986, 1330, Dining Hall, aka it's 1 30 p.m. According to what it said, <laughs> the Ushiro Mia family conference was held once every year on the first weekend of October. If a normal family were to hold a so called family conference, you'd expect it to be nothing more than a reunion of rarely seen relatives who greet each other around buckets of sushi or something. Hey man, I could go for sushi, to be quite honest. However, part of the family's great fortune had been. Lent out to grandfather's children, and no one in this family was considered an adult until they had met with success in business. So, this meeting literally was a conference. How much of the fortune was invested? What sort of business was conducted? 
how much profit was earned. As a result, how much of the fortune borrowed from the main family could be repaid? Or possibly how much more would be borrowed for future business ventures? What lessons had they learned, and what could they learn from their mistakes? It seems that topics like these were discussed very seriously in the past. My dad said it was like lying on a bed of nails. Apparently, it used to be a very serious family meeting where people were bathed in scornful and angry voices, and some people even got slapped despite their age. However, that had become a thing of the past. Now, with everyone pursuing their own business ventures and achieving success, it was becoming more of a normal yearly get together. Hell yeah, ain't that something? Normal yearly get together. Even so, telling grandfather about recent events was extremely stressful. So while it was nothing more than a simple get together for us grandchildren, it was still a real stomach ache for our parents. The absence of the man who was the source of all this trouble, regardless of the reason, probably made today's lunch taste much more delicious. The phrase, while the demon is not around, everyone can relax, comes to mind. Anyway, Let's, intru let's introduce Jessica's father, whose face I haven't seen for six years. The man sitting to my father's left is his older brother and Jessica's father, Uncle Something. His name sure is easy to read. You don't say. Yeah, every, yeah, every character is introduced except for the one in the uh, one in above Genji. So, Ushiro Mia Kraus, Kinzo's first child, leads the family conference as the eldest of the four siblings. However, the other siblings suspect that he plans to claim the entire family fortune for himself, and the antagonism between him and the others grows increasingly severe. A real, ins a real estate investor, he has put a vast amount of money into the development of the resort. However, his results have been harshly criticized. Well then. His, na his name sure is easy to read. Kraus. Now that we've gotten used to this string of weird names, our perspective is totally skewed. So Kraus doesn't actually seem that bad. Are you sure? It even starts to sound kind of cool. Just like with Aunt Natsuki, I didn't have any many memories of speaking with Uncle Kraus. He had never been one to chat to children, and I felt like he was always talking with the adults, just like Aunt Natsuki. According to my father's gossip, he was a spiteful and violent man. If what he said is true, Uncle Kraus used to be very domineering from his position as the oldest sibling and was despised by all the other siblings. Though, despite that, those siblings all seem to be chatting happily together. Yeah, that's kind of... It's pretty... St <laughs> that's kind of strange, to be honest with what I'm trying to say. Oh, well. Even if their relationship was bad when they were children, sometimes when people grow up and live apart from each other, their relationships change. That's probably what this was. I guess that's what happens when, like, when when my relatives grow like older, and then all oh, they they sh and then they sh they push their grudges aside. I guess that's how it is. That's probably what this was. After all, they all had children about the same age. By sharing the same family environment, they probably f profited by exchanging opinions. Maybe because of that, a short while ago, the circle of parents began to discuss the exams Jessica and I would be taking. Jessica, in order to escape questions about exams from my father on her left, purposefully faced right while firing off a rapid series of comments, not giving him any chance to get a word in. Moving on, let's look at the end opposite from Kraus and the others. 
In the very last seat at the table, an old gentleman with a sturdy physique sat facing Kyrie san This was my first time meeting him. I had only just been introduced to him, but it seems he's grandfather's personal doctor, a man named Ananjo. Oh, but I guess he's the last one introduced, huh? Yeah. Nanjo Teramasa, Kinzo's attending physician and longtime friend. Once ran a hospital on Nijima, but turned it over to his son and now enjoys his old age in peace. One of the very few people that Kinzo trusts, now that he is held captive by an unrelenting suspicion of others. Big hearted by nature, he has, he has maintained a long friendship with Kinzo unperturbed by his tendency to fly into a rage at the slightest propagation. <laughs> so everyone is int introduced. Pretty cool. Like we got the servants on the bottom. We got the aunts and uncles. And then there's the grandchildren of the source. <laughs> and then Kinzo. <laughs> Nanjo. I heard he used to own a huge clinic on the nearby island of Nijima, but he turned it over to his son and began living a life of leisure in his old age. I think the only character that I mentioned that hasn't been introduced is uh, Badler's uh, sibling. So, there, there's that. <laughs> he had known grandfather since the very beginning, when the mansion was first constructed on this island and had built up a relationship over, sec over several decades. I thought at first that the two of them might have gotten to know each other through grandfather's suspicious hobbies, but it seems he was usually grandfather's chess partner. I see. That kind of hobby seems very like our grandfather, what with his love of all things Western. Nanjo's probably the only person who could enter Rokunjima despite being neither a family member nor a servant. He looked like a calm old gentleman as he listened to the discussion between Kyrie and the other woman who sat near to him. Considering how long he stayed by the side of our short-tempered grandfather, his generous heart was probably nothing to laugh at. Still. Even though he was a family doctor, having anyone outside the Ushiro Mia family attend the family conference was a little odd. It made me think that grandfather's condition might have worsened so much, it'd be a major topic of discussion at today's conference. After all, George said something like that just a second ago. Something about how we've been getting continuous reports since around last year that grandfather didn't have long to live it's nasty to think about it but consider but consider how rich grandfather is at the time of his death his wealth will suddenly be released probably along with a fair share of our parents stomach acid and it'll lead to ulcers for everyone after all this sort of thing just gets messier when there's more wealth to be divided there's a good chance they'll be talking about stuff like that at the family conference. Still, it's not like it's got anything to do with us kids. Oh, we, it's not like we need some allowance or anything like that, you know? Finally, even though he hasn't shown up, let me introduce our grandfather. The person who should be sitting in that incipient chair is Ushiro Mio Kinzo. It really sucks. Everyone else in the family has these weird names, but he's got this perfectly normal one himself. If only his name were written Kinzo, but he let us call him Goldsmith or something. I totally forgot. <laughs> what? If only his name were written Kinzo, but he let us call him Gold or something. Yeah, I totally freak out. Yeah. As you can probably guess by now, he's a frightening person with an extremely short temper, temper. I'm one of his grandchildren, not a son, and I haven't seen him since elementary school. Thanks to that, I have no memory of, beaten, of being beaten myself, but our parents were apparently raised 
with an iron fist. That earlier conversation between my dad and Uncle Krause about who should go convince Grandfather to come down seems pretty darn funny once you know their background. Hmm. You can't really tell Grandfather's story without covering that pivotal event back before the Showa era, aka the Showa era of 1926 to 1989. Thunberg Lily, <laughs> what a music. Until the Meiji and Taisho eras, Meiji era being 1868 to 1912, and the Taisho era 1912 to 1926, the Ushiro Miya family was great and prosperous. They owned several spinning mills, making them rich enough to just double over it, laughing every day as the money kept rolling in. Incidentally, Grandfather was a member of a branch family and had pretty much nothing to do with the main family. Not only was he weighed down the list of people who could inherit the headship, but he had hardly any contact with the glamorous main family. However, during the Great Kanto Earthquake in 1923, Daisho 12, the mansion owned by the Ushiromiya family in Odawara was flattened. The spinning mills in Tokyo were all burned down in a huge fire, and the Ushiro Miya family lost most of his wealth and family members in an instant. So once they started trying to figure out who the successor to the Ushiro Miya family should be, they apparently found no one remaining except Kinzo and his branch family. In Kinzo's later reminiscences, he referred to this as good fortunes so great that it overturned fate. With that, Grandfather's boring everyday life did a 180. He was entrusted with reviving the dying Ushiromiya family, which had lost nearly all of his wealth. However, just because he had been entrusted with this task didn't mean he could accomplish it. Apparently, those around him weren't really expecting much. However, this is when Grandfather began displaying his extraordinary talent and good luck. Grandfather used all of the family's remaining wealth, as well as everything from the hair on his head to his toenails, as collateral in order to borrow a massive amount of money. Once he'd built up a gigantic war chest, he immediately invested in businesses. It was like something, it was like someone tumbling down a hill on a bike without any brakes. And then jumping onto a neighboring lake, onto a neighboring bike, and then another one, just like some crazy street performance. I'll bet everyone thought Grandfather had no business ability whatsoever. However, after several miracles and turns of good luck, with coincidences piling up every chance taking advantage of, He was suddenly in control of powerful connections with the occupying forces. At that time, MacArthur and the GHQ were the ultimate authority in Japan. Grandfather, in a twinkle of an eye, began succeeding in business under the protection of the occupying forces, quickly becoming very rich. At this point, it's probably safe to say that information, not luck, saved the day. He must have made some seriously deep connections with the occupying forces. Grandfather knew beforehand about emergency demands that would be made for the Korean War. Oh man, we just reading up some history. No, it was more than that. He must have predicted those emergency demands from the very beginning. When he started investing his money. The history books make it sound like all of Japan made a large profit off of the emergency demands during the Korean War, but that isn't actually true. Only a very limited number of the super rich played the money game and made an easy profit. Most of the citizens remained the poor. In other words, Grandfather was a member of this extremely lucky group of winners. I'm pretty sure this all happened during 1950, Showa 25 or so. He said 25. The Great Kanto Earthquake happened in 1924, Taisho 13, so... 
That means Grandfather was able to revive the near-dead Ushiromiya family in only about 20 years to a level even higher than it had ever been before. With that, you'd think he'd revive the main family in Odawara, but for some reason, he went and did something as crazy as buying an entire small island in the Izu Archipelago. Buying an entire island is not something that you can ordinarily do today. However, Grandfather was clever. He contacted the GHQ and applied for the establishment of, the, of a marine resource base. He acquired this island as a, prop, as a business property, then tossed that project aside and claimed it as his own plot of land. After the war, there were prevention measures against food shortages, and having the sponsorship of the GHQ meant that nobody could depose him. From what I've heard, the Tokyo Metropolis of that day offered his land to him practically for free. Later, Tokyo made difficulties by telling Kinzo to return the land, but the pushy GHQ intervened. Anyway, it seems under the table, bribes did their work well. In the end, the city gave up in frustration. Grandfather, with considerable skill and good luck, managed to weather the stormy seas of that period, obtaining a vast fortune in his own island. Of course, it probably wasn't all luck. He was obsessed with all things Western, which helped him cultivate his English skills. He was able to use this to his advantage and sink his teeth into the GHQ. A mansion was built on the island soon after. This mansion, in fact. Grandfather, with his love of the Western style, made this once inhabited island a canvas upon which he could realize his dreams to his heart's content. He now had the western mansion of his dreams, overflowing with emotion and atmosphere, and a beautiful garden, featuring, featuring all sorts of roses. And he had a private beach where nobody other than himself would ever be permitted to leave a footprint. Are you kidding me? Only Kinzo um, goes to this private beach? Not even everyone wants to enjoy the beach? Man, well, everyone is just... In the man, everyone in the family missing out. What the fuck? Man, no, no one is permitted to leave a footprint. Jesus, this would be a dream come true for any boy. After that, he made good use of his family. After that, he made good use of his huge fortune becoming a large stockholder in the extremely stable iron and steel industry, and was able to live an easy and comfortable life just using the dividends. Well, he's just that incredible. This kind of person usually has the ability to foresee and predict the future, or at least that is how they've portrayed after the fact. But Grandfather denies all of that, repeatedly saying that he was simply a blessed with extraordinary luck. Anyway, even a lord like that can't help but grow increasingly eccentric when locked up alone on an island, where all his dreams are made real. Everyone knows that he's had a western obsession from the start. But none of our parents really know when his bizarre black magic hobby began. Yeah, I was wondering, like, when did he start his crazy ass bizarre shit? Like, like, what? Did his love of black magic begin way back when he became fascinated with everything Western? Or did his miraculous stretch of good luck? while reviving his family caused him to feel a mysterious power in himself. At some point, Grandfather began to make the research of black magic his life's work. He filled his study up with suspicious books, chemicals, and magical items as he became increasingly bizarre. From what I've heard, those 
around him warmly, question mark, watched over him, figuring that someone who had achieved business, achieved success in life, sorry about that, had a right to do as he pleased, but there's no way that's true. They were probably just creeped out, thinking, that's disgusting, I don't want to get involved, fuck that. Anyway, that agitated period was an age of big gambles, with both opportunities and risks. Let's say Grandfather was born in this time period. He would have had no opportunities and would probably have advanced like a chess piece from mandatory education to college at a leisurely pace, never becoming more than an average salary man. If that happened, he'd probably have sat somewhere, happily talking behind his boss's back. No, no, not in a fancy dining hall like this, more like at a table in some bar. Then again, I'll bet this family conference would be a whole lot more relaxing if that were the case. <laughs> oh man, what an interesting history. Okay, that's enough about the old geezer. More importantly, let's talk about this incredible lunch. What the fuck now are you making me hungry? Oh,しかも、魚は近海で取れたやつだろ。スーパーの刺身とは訳が違ったぜ。あいやいや、せよバトラ。育ちがバレちまうだろうが。<laughs> fucking Rudolph was like, dude, you're embarrassing me, damn it. Everyone let out a big laugh. Damn it, you say that even though you love those cheap pubs. <laughs> 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 ゴダさんは多分その道じゃ少しは知られた人だったんじゃないかな。よくは知らねえんだけどよ。老舗ホテルで乗れんわけだか派閥の分裂だかややこしいことがあってよ。うん。I'll as Golda removed, removed the empty plates, he began to recount his own bumpy past without losing a smile. うしろ見分けで再び料理人として腕を振るう機会を賜ることができました。大勢の方の笑顔も嬉しいですが、お疲れすると決めた限られた方々にだけ喜んでいただくために繊細なお仕事ができるのもとても楽しいことでございます。これ
I thought I'd already filled up on delicious food, but as soon as I laid eyes on that dessert, my stomach started yelling more. Uh, fucking relatable. I don't know. I don't know much about the desserts, but this looked really good. A white pudding-like substance was garnished with two shades of red sauce and elegant rose petals adorned the dish. Normally, during a high-class meal like this, you're supposed to wait for the chef to extol the virtues, virtues of this particular meal before eating. However, Maria was completely indifferent to strict rules like that, so she got excited by this beautiful and delicious-looking dessert jumping into the fray as soon as it was placed before her. Aunt Rosa scolded her, calling it bad manners, but George responded by saying, Now, now, it's okay. It's fine. Maria exclaimed as she sampled the two colored sauces. Oh god. This is just some one heck of some fun time at the at the dinner. Apparently, one sauce was sweet and the other sour. Yeah, sweet and sour. Despite it being bad manners, I also stuck my little finger in and licked it. Whoa, one of the sauces was sour enough to make you pucker up. If it were yellow, I'd have suspected lemon, but I couldn't guess what kind of sourness would be red. I decided to ask Shannon, who was putting away the serving cart behind us. Shannon-chan, what's the sauce? Yeah, what kind of ingredients did you put in there? <laughs> She's like, uh, I don't know. Shannon Chen hesitated to speak. Maybe her job was just to set the table so she doesn't really know. Still, even considering that, she seemed pretty stressed. Maybe I shouldn't have asked. Or did they use some ingredient that we'd be better off no not knowing about? While Aunt Natsuki made a gesture that seemed so indicate an oncoming headache, Kumasawa-san, who was setting the table at the opposite seat, began to chuckle. It's gonna shock me? What? Is it some kind of secret ingredient? <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know either. Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is uh, a bit suspicious. Uh-oh. Go on. Kumasawa-san leaned across from the other side of the table. I leaned forward myself when she asked. Their interest caught Jessica, George Aniki, and of course, Maria also put their ears closer. <laughs> Squeezed from a mackerel? Oh boy, so it's not some sort of sour fruit. <laughs> oh god. This has got to be a joke. 
That's crazy, we all thought, horrified. Only Maria accepted it, nodding sagely. <laughs> when Maria started clamoring that Makalo was sour, the adults were unable to contain their laughter. Wait, what? Only Aunt Rosa. Her face red. Why is she just talking to herself? Whispered whispered to Maria that mackerel's sour only once prepared as Shimasaba. Vinegared. Huh. Ah, now I totally remember. Kumasawa-san was always like this, wasn't she? I think I remember her tricking me too in all sorts of ways when I was young. The most lethal has got to be that one. Those flimsy black things in Chinese dishes. They're kikaraji mushrooms. She told me they were penguin meat. I went and I went around. I and I went all around school like a smartass, telling everyone, didn't I? Kumasano-pa-chan, <laughs> Oh man. Maria ga shinji chau daro? <laughs> what a jokester. I can't believe Kumasawa just pranked us. Golda looked a little bit little put off about his masterpiece being laughed at for such a bizarre reason but after clearing his throat once he introduced the dessert to us so では、デザートのご説明をさせていただきます。本日はご来賓の皆様が大層お気に入りでございましたバラの庭園にちなみましてパンナコッタをローズガーデン風に仕上げてみました。パンナコッタ Strawberry and rose hips. Strawberry So that's where. See, I was like. This has to be some sort of like a, a fruit of some sort. Now, Hanabira wa kanshou yo to natte orimasu no de yokete kara o me shiagari kudasaimase. Sore de wa dozo o tanoshimi kudasai. Whoa. Man, I almost want to applaud before eating. Just like with medicine, reading the detailed description for it seems to make it work a whole lot better. As Goldasan elaborated on the details of this dessert, it started to feel even more appetizing. Seriously, should you call him supple or just talented? The dessert was probably planned from the beginning, but taking the hints when we all stopped in front of the Rose Garden earlier today, he displayed an incredible and timely awareness by just adding a few rose petals from that garden. This combination of sweet and sour was also ex exquisite. If it was just sweet, you just get used to it and bored halfway through. But if you reached the sour sauce at that point, you'd get a really vivid taste. And then, once you returned to the sweet sauce, all of the sourness in your mouth would be replaced with an enjoyable sweetness. Yeah, exactly, sweet and sour. I'm sure everyone else felt the same way. Every time Godasan passed by one of our seats, someone praised the taste and his presentation. How 
お客様をおもてなしするに値します恐れ入ります奥様ご存知ですかローズヒップには頭痛に効く効果もあるそうですよ奥様に特にお気に入りいただけるかと思い特別にご用意させていただきました See, Goda is a thoughtful man. Not so he, sh he shouldn't be that bitter. So. Arigato. Hora, it t a d e s h o Natsuhine san. Rose hip was the two niki kutte. Mitai ne. ああゴーダさんあんたには惚れるでなあ後であんたの待遇を聞かせてや無理ならあんたの欲しい年収指立ててくれるだけでもええやで<笑>あんたの腕がこの島だけで独占されとるのは人類の食文化に対する冒涜やその腕わしの会社で振るってお客の皆さんを喜ばせてみる気はないかのう I love it how he just advertising it to、um, go to like face to face kind of amusing <laughs> ひでよしさんうちのゴーダを引き抜かれるのですかこれは困ったゴーダの待遇をもっと良くしないと引き抜かれてしまいそうだ、oh boy. <笑>そうした方がいいわねじゃないと引き抜かれて。三色が熊沢さんのサバ料理にされちゃうわよ。What a way to crack a joke! <笑><笑>これはこれは手厳しゅうございます。すっかり根に持たれてしまいまして。Everyone let out a huge laugh. According to Jessica, Kumasawa san's mackerel jokes were a running gag that our parents had long since gotten used to. Kumasawa san often claimed that mackerels had precious nutritional value. You can't be that bad. Which could slow aging, make people smarter, and more. Supposedly, while it couldn't stop the outward. Signs of aging. It helped prevent aging on the inside. Since she was still spirited enough to tell these kinds of jokes at her age, there must be something to that theory. So, there are still a tashimas. You shook me, a fruit. たくさんのサバ料理をお召し上がりいただきますのでどうぞご期待くださいませね<笑><笑>期待してるよ今晩はしめサバでキュッとしゃれ込みたいぜそれは素敵ねついでに日本酒の美味しいのも出てこないかしらええー、ございますよ六軒島名物のサバ焼酎なるものがございまして焼酎
Kumasawa-san, together with Shannon-chan, bowed and pushed the serving cart away. It was pretty funny to watch Goda-san, who looked like his show had totally been stolen, explain in a serious voice that we would be having calf steak for dinner. Ano, Kumasawa-san, saki wa arigatou gozaimashita. As she pushed the serving cart, Shannon bowed her head very deeply. <laughs> Kumasawa may have played dumb, but she had obviously understood and saved Shannon in the nick of time. Back when Battler had asked about dessert, Shannon had unfortunately hesitated. There may have been several ways to do dodge the question, but all of them would have required some quick wits. Shannon, who hesitated when hard-pressed for a response, was always suffering because of this small weakness. If only Shannon had a little of the craftiness needed to cleverly shake off a mistake, like Golda, her life would have been a bit easier. The fact that she could perform other tasks flawlessly made this weakness even more unfortunate. However, there were some who understood Shannon's, who understood Shannon's honest nature, her inability to gloss over a mistake and draw attention away from it. That was why Kumasawa had smoothly come to her rescue. Saki Genji-san ga gongo no shift ni henkou ga aru to oshiyatte mashita yo. たしかシャノンさんは夕方までお休みがもらえたと思いました。うらやましい。え、すみません。シフト表を確認していませんでした。そうそう。<笑> <うらやましい。笑> オーブンでこれからちょっとサバを焼こうと思ってるんですよ。できたらお休みの前にちょっと手伝ってくれると嬉しいですね。はい。喜んでお手伝いさせていただきます。To Shannon, Kumasawa was like a mother among the servants. Ah, uh, yes. This is a good way to end it from here. I guess this is how family reunions can be. Just to uh, get along well. Anyway. We'll pick it up for the next part. So, like, comment, and subscribe. Let's see what happens after the the dinner part of it. Have a good one.